Hello and welcome to this tutorial. Today I will be showing you how to create a progress bar using Python. This is a walkthrough where I'll be showing you line by line the code and I'll be giving you explanations along the way. Before I start, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so by either using the button on my homepage or a link that will be appearing in the video. Let's get started. The first thing we need to do is import the tkinter module as that's the module we'll be using to create our progress bar. And I've given it an alias of tkr. So wherever we reference tkr, I'm calling the tkinter module. The next thing I did was create the window itself by typing window equals tkr.tk. And I've given it a few generic sort of specifications like a title and a geometry. By typing in window.title, then in quotation marks, calling progress bar and window.geometry in quotation marks typing 400 by 30 which is sufficient for this tutorial. The next thing we have to do is actually create our progress bar and pack it into our window. And now the progress bar sits in a different part of the tkinter library. It sits in what we call the ttk area of tkinter. Now when we typed in, when you created our window, we typed in tkr.tk and the tk area and the ttk area both have very similar class names. And so you need to separate out the class names. And I've done that by re-importing a sub area of tkinter, the ttk area, as tkrtk. And we're going to be using that to actually create our progress bar. And how I've done that is I've typed in progress bar equals tkr tk calling our ttk area of tkinter dot progress bar. And then in brackets typed in window, packing it into our window. And then I've orientated it horizontally. So it's going to go along. And then its length is 400, the same as the geometry length I specified for the window. And then mode equals determinate. This is because we know how long it's going to take and how many intervals there are and what the end and the start number are. If we if our if our sort of um, our timings and our progress bar was determined by things such as internet speed, connectivity, or processing power of the computer, then our mode would be indeterminate because we wouldn't be sure, you know, how long it would take and how many intervals there are. The next thing we need to do is pack our progress bar into the window. So we've created it using this line here. Now we need to pack it. We do that typing in progress underscore bar dot pack. And then we've packed it to the top by typing in in the brackets of pack side equals top with top being in quotation marks. And top also has to be have a lowercase t. If it has a capital T, it won't work in this case. So that is our progress bar created. Now comes the difficult bit. Now we need to create our start number, our end number. We also need a way of updating our progress bar. And also we need to specify the time intervals. And we also need to find a way of updating the number as we go along. So first thing we need to do is specify our current number or our start number and our end value. I've done that by just simply creating a variable number equals zero and another variable called end value equals 10. So this number will start at zero and it will update by a specific interval as we go along until it reaches our end value 10. The next thing we need to do is we need to create a way of updating the number um, and so that it can be repeated over and over again. And the best way to do that until we get to 10. And the best way we can do that is by putting it in a function. And I've done that exactly here. So I've called this function amount. Then in the amount of, set of brackets, I've called number. And then below the number, I've called progress bar square brackets value equals number. And that's a very useful way of updating the number as we go along. The next thing we need to do is set our current value and actually set this end value. So these are variables we've created. However, it's not actually set 
into the progress bar. And that's what we need to do here below. And we've done that by typing in progress bar square brackets value equals number. So that sets our value as starting at zero and updating as we go along. And then we need to set our end value by typing in set as by typing in progress bar square brackets maximum equals end value. And that will set our end value to be 10. So what we've done here is we've created our start number and the number that, a way of updating that start number as we go along till it hits the end value. But now we need to link it all together. And how we do that is we're using a for loop. So let me go through this for loop with you step by step. So with this for loop, you typed in for i equals for i in range 1 to 11. So it will call numbers 1 to 10. First line is number equals number plus 1. So what that means is the first number 0 will be updated to be 0 plus 1, so 1. And then what will happen is that number 1 will be printed on our output, on our right, as a string by type, as a percentage by type, timesing that 1 by 10 and then adding a percent sign at the end. So this will also update giving intervals by our percentage progression of, um, of the progress bar. The next thing we need to do is, is um, specify how, how long we want between each interval. And we do that by using the after function. And how that works is we type it, we call our progress bar, and then we type in dot after, and then we specify a time in milliseconds. So 500 milliseconds is equivalent to half a second. So after half a second, this amount number hit, we're calling our function progress bar value number will be called. So after half a second, the update will happen, essentially. And then we actually need to fix that update into our progress bar and update the progress bar by typing in progress bar dot update. So what we've done in this for loop is we've increased the number by one. We've printed the number as a percentage on our output. We've then updated the number and, and, and linked our function to it. And then we have also updated the progress bar within our window so we can actually see the update happen. And the final thing you need to do is actually activate this entire code by typing in tkr.mainloop and then brackets. And after you've done that, that is the code completed. So the next thing you can do is run it and see if it works. So if you run it, we can see here that it has worked. We've got our progress bar updating on the right. We have our numbers updating also on the output. So let me do that again. Let's run it. Here our progress bar has up, is updating as we go along. And we have our numbers running down on the right. Now there's a few things to take into account. You want to try and get the numbers here that are printing out to be equal to the positioning of the, pro, of the green bar on your progress bar. So if I put this print number sort of below, uh, not there, below the delay, it will start to look a bit odd and I can show you. So here we've got updating going along. Notice that this is providing a delay. So the, the by the time this output number has been printed, this progress bar is already going up to the next value. So you need to be very careful with where you're putting your, your outputs if you're doing it in relation to the progress bar. So that is it for this tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed, enjoyed it. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and don't forget to watch any other videos. I've got loads more on creating different sorts of GUI widgets. I've also got other things on importing Excel files and exporting Excel files. I've also got a couple on reading PDFs and just make sure you watch it all and you learn a whole ton of stuff. Thank you very much for watching.